All right, man. So we're back, you know, with a week three review. You know, week three was a pretty bad week for both of us, considering I'm a Cowboys fan and, you know, we lost to the Cardinals and it was a bad loss as well. And then the, you know, the Bears, you know, lost to the Chiefs was really bad as well as Taylor Swift being shown on the TV every like two seconds, bro. I mean, it was 41 to zero at one point, but yeah, eventful week three, though. You know, we're going to talk about the Bears, the Cowboys, you know, um, Definitely who we think is the most impressive 3-0 and team right now and just some other stuff like that, big-time performance this week and everything. Yeah, I mean, you said I don't have to say much more. It was just – it was a rough weekend. Uh, there were some good games and good moments, but, I mean, I feel like the most embarrassing half of football was the Bears in the first half. I know the I know the Broncos allowed thirty five in both halves against the Dolphins, but to be down thirty four nothing at half was just embarrassing. Um, now, granted, obviously the Chiefs are you know Super Bowl champs. They're trying to become a dynasty, and the Bears, worst team in the football, so that's kind of what we expected. But it still was pretty embarrassing to say the least. I think that was the most embarrassing half, at least, of football all weekend. What I think is funny about the whole thing is the game that, you know, obviously Taylor Swift decided to come to was the game where they played your Chicago Bears. And that leaded to a 41-0, to like, at one point in the third quarter. I mean, I think Mahomes went out in nine minutes left in the third quarter. Um, it was, like, the fourth quarter, and Fields had, like, 47 yards of passing like passing yards it was bad man um it's looking like Caleb Williams might be going to the Chicago Bears which I honestly think like at this point y'all if y'all don't beat the Broncos this week I would say like if you lose to the Broncos this week and you go 0-4 because Broncos Bears are two of the worst teams right now if you lose to them you might as well just tank for Caleb I feel like and I know that's hard to do with Justin Fields because you're still trying to see if he's a franchise guy. But, like, at that point, just tank for a better pick because there's so many holes in this team. And it, it it looked bad Sunday for sure. I think the only bright spot is that we have Carolina's pick, too. It's like we're going to have two potentially top five picks. Um. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even call it tanking. I honestly just think we're not good enough to win. Like it's not even like we're tanking, we're just bad. <laughs> so like, but no, I feel I feel like I wonder how embarrassing like this must feel for the Bears and the Broncos. Like I wonder if there's ever been a matchup where the two teams of prior week lost by a combined 81 points. <laughs> like that's gotta be like an all-time record. Yeah. This this Bears first Broncos matchup is literally the matchup of mid <laughs> and, and honestly I kind of wonder like which one's worse but like the Bears have only had one winning season in 10 years they've lost 12 straight games you know obviously dating back to last year and everything like that but if you're the Broncos I feel like they're in a worse situation you paid Russell Wilson so much money you know and last year he was bad and he's not looking too good this year either and he's not even the, the number one worst part about that team right now. Then you traded a first round pick for a coach, and we've never seen that before. And he starts off 0 and 3 and gives up 70 points. And the Dolphins could have broke the record if they wanted to. So without Jalen Waddle, can you imagine if they had Jalen Waddle? They might have scored a hundred. <laughs> yeah, bro. They let Mostert and add chain or whatever, go for like however many rushing yards they went for. It was crazy, but I I definitely think it's partly on Sean Payton too. Um I mean the defense is was really good last year and now it's just awful. They let Sam Howell cook them the second half last week and then they just let up 70 points. So for me I think Sean Payton needs to get a lot of blame here just because like I feel like Russell Wilson's actually not playing bad he's definitely shown improvements from last year I mean he's not good but it couldn't get much worse it's definitely gotten a little better 
obviously, you know, he's got more weapons now with, with all the injuries they dealt last year. But I think defensively is their main issue right now. And just obviously Russ needs to I, – I think he might get benched. And I know he's playing better, but something's going to happen there. It's They're not going to fire Sean Payton or anything. So it's going to be – there's going to be a change at some point. And I think that could be Russ getting benched. The thing about Russ, though, is like he's still being able to move the ball down the field and and score. The Bears have been horrific on offense. And by the fourth quarter fields, it only completed like five passes, which is a b- big issue. He's also been sacked the most out of any quarterback in the league. And that's, yeah, partially because his O-line. Second is he holds the ball for too long. We know these things, but yeah. Both of these teams are in weird spots, and I think both of these teams have a high chance of landing Caleb Williams. Now, on to the Cowboys. You know, it looked like we went out the night before didn't get any sleep. We thought we we're going to play the Arizona Cardinals. And we just showed up and we got beat. Um, the run defense is horrible. We let Joshua Dobbs and James Conner run all over us. I think that was the main issue. Second was the penalties. It was terrible, you know, just back to back to back, you know, beating ourselves up. And then obviously the red zone, you know, scoring is something that's going to be a progress for us. I think we can fix the other two, right? We know we're better than the Cardinals, and we had so many penalties. Rush defense, I'm not too worried about that. It just got to be more dialed in, I feel like. But the red zone uh, issues is something that I am a little bit worried about right now. Um, we just haven't been able to score in the red zone. In the Jets game, it was bad. Even in the Giants game, it could have been better. And then this game, it was terrible. And then, you know, it when it looked like we we were down two scores, we needed, you know, two touchdowns to win. It was looking like, you know, we had time, you know, we had like five, six minutes on the clock. Dak had a good drive down the field and throws it right to, you know, the linebacker in red on the Cardinals in the end zone. And, you know, that was just like demoralizing. I feel like more than anything, because, you know, we lost to the Cardinals. Which is not okay. (laughs) It given was our roster, given our team, given a team that's trying to win, you know, the NFC East over the Eagles and how important that um, home field advantage is, losing a game like this isn't ideal at all. I'm not worried, but it's it, it was bad. I feel like, I mean, yeah, it was bad for sure, given, you know, the Cowboys expectations this season and like how they've played the first couple weeks, but there's always games like that every year. I mean, last year, the chiefs lost to the Colts. I know the Bengals, when they went to the super bowl, lost to the bears. Like there's just always games where it's just like, how do they lose? You know, obviously it's concerning. Just, I feel like long-term Dak and McCarthy in the red zone. I think that's where it's most concerning for me. Um, like you see Mahomes and Reed, for example, like they're always one of the best teams in the red zone. And usually these red zone, red zone, you know, high efficiency teams come from teams with good offensive coaches or great quarterbacks. So that, that could be a little concern given the fact I don't think McCarthy or Dak are great. I think they're both solid, but I do, I do think the red zone is, uh, offensively is definitely a concern. I mean, you lost Dalton Schultz and Zeke, who were big in the red zone last year, especially Zeke. Um, so just replacing like something like that might need to happen. Obviously, I, I do, I do think the Cowboys will be fine though. I mean, they're too good defensively to, you know, struggle again like that. I know Do- Dobbs, Dobbs, shout out to Dobbs though. He's He's been better than I anticipated, but still, it's an embarrassing. We're not, we not gonna act like you ain't been hating on him, bro. I, mean, I, told, I told you he was like even last year they had a chance to make the playoffs when he was on the Titans, and I told you he's not that bad. Like he he's manageable. Like he can game manage, and you were like he's a bum. 
<laughs> I mean, he, he, he's shown he's not that – I mean, he's not good, but he's a solid, capable backup. I think. I think that's fair. But I'm not worried about the Cowboys. Bottom line, they, they just didn't, like, seem like they were interested in playing that game. Kind of oh, just – And is Cooper Rush might have won us that game. I'm just saying. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring up that talk of bench and Dak right now. All right, I'm not overreacting, but I think somehow, some way, Cooper Rush might have won us that game. There's definitely a chance. I mean, we'll never know, but I think for me, I do think through these first three weeks, um there's kind of a gap between the top six teams in the NFL and everybody else. I feel like the Dolphins, the Chiefs, and the and the Bills, and the AFC, and then the NFC, I got the Eagles, Niners, and Cowboys. I feel like those six are the true contenders right now. I don't feel like – Better throw Ravens in there now. I know they lost to the Colts, but – I think the Ravens, they're, on the, they're, they're the fourth team for me in the AFC right now. Okay. I'm not sure – I'm still not convinced. I I know they they just get hurt all the time. I just want to see them fully healthy. But I'm not do- I'm not saying for later in the year. I'm saying right now as a week three. I think that was pi on Zay Flowers. I think we all seen it, and I think that would have changed the that that pi is called. That's a field goal, and Justin Tucker's not going to miss two in a row. And the one he missed before was like sixty yards. So like. I don't know. I don't look at that as a bad loss. Although Lamar, you know, somehow, some way needs to win those games. Losing to Gardner Minshew, a backup, isn't ideal either. But like you said, they have those games. I honestly thought the Bills' loss to the Jets was worse than the Ravens' loss to the Colts. So for me, I'd probably have them at three. And I, like you said, Dolphins and Chiefs one and two. But I don't think, I think we got to throw the Ravens in. I think. For them to continue to lose running backs like they have in the run game still be super good. And, you know, you know, I think Lamar is looking confident, though. I think he's lo- he's looking as confident as he has ever. You know, obviously he missed some a few throws in OT. It looked like him and Zay had some miscommunication. But, like, I feel like the Ravens, though, like, uh, you're right, though, for sure. They got to stay healthy. But I think that they are a legit contender. Yeah, that. That division's very interesting right now. Honestly, I, I feel like the loss of Chubb is definitely gonna hurt the Browns somewhat. I mean, they they played really well though against the Titans, but still long term, I don't know if it's sustainable. I, I do think Deshaun, like I called him out last week. I, <laughs> and he played pretty well, but it's still I still just gotta continue to see it. Um and obviously the Steelers offense, I don't know, not sold on them. And then, you know, the Bengals, it's just all comes out of the Joe Burrows and his, his calf. So that division's it's crazy right now. But you want to talk about that? I think we're on the same page with the Joe Burrow injury. Um, there was an interview with Jamar Chase, and he was saying that he told Joe Burrow to move, like don't play at all because he wanted him, you know, during those playoff weeks and, you know, when they really need him. And I agree. I think you can't play around this calf injury. You know, Aaron Rodgers had a calf injury in preseason. You know, and if you don't take care of it, obviously you saw what happened to Aaron Rodgers' Achilles. Not saying the same thing is going to happen, but you've seen the same thing with KD in the 2019 finals uh, in the Raptors series. So I think they need to protect their franchise guy. I think you got this one win against the Rams, which was, I think we both agree, was much needed, a must-win game. I think you're one and two now. I think the goal is to get to two and two, but I think, Burrow needs to rest at least one week, bro. I just like that's not a guy who you want to not have. And you, you look at this O line; the O line is still bad. Ton of false starts. Burrow's getting pressured every play, but luckily he gets the ball out faster than any quarterback in the league. He's got the intelligence; he can pick apart defense. He's gonna take what you want. You know what I'm saying? The Rams tried to take away the deep ball. And with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins take away all those big plays, he continued to take the check down and take the check down, do what he's supposed to. It was a slow, ugly, muddy game, but he got the job done, and that's what he's going to do. I mean, it's the same dude who got sacked nine times 
in a playoff game and somehow won the game. So I think you got to be smart with this, intelligent. And if it's if I'm the coach, I'm not playing Burrow next week. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, it was definitely a must win. So like the fact that he went out there definitely shows like what type of player and just mentality he has. But I mean, I just I just wanted to see, see him fully healthy for once. Like you see he's playing a little bit differently, not taking as many deep shots down the field and just kind of, you know, throwing the short routes, which is fine because the O-line's terrible. Um, but I don't know. This situation is definitely tricky. We've seen the calf lead to Achilles injuries, and hopefully that doesn't happen to Burrow. Um, but it's definitely a scary situation that they got to be extremely cautious with. Because like you said, you want you can't have Joe Burrow compromised going into the playoffs. You want him fully ready to go. But at the same time, you got to win these games so you don't drop yourself in too deep of a hole to where you're not even in the playoff contention. So, I mean, they got to buy, and they got three more games until they're by. I mean, I don't know if you sit them all three weeks, but if you gave them a whole month off, you would definitely be back, I feel like. And I feel like you're playing the Titans, the Cardinals, and Seattle. You can win at least one of those one or two of those games and be three and three or two and four. And then after the bye week, Joe Burrow fully healthy. Like, I feel like that's what they should do. Um, because I mean, like, you can you can hang around with the Titans and beat the Cardinals. So it's not it's not like you're playing the the Ravens or some juggernaut of a team. Like, I feel like they can easily win one or two of those three next games before they're by. And, and he looked good last night, you know, and going against Hedrickson looked really good. Yeah. yeah. Wilson, two picks. Like they, they look good. Like they, you know, that's that Rams offense before last week or that last night was playing very well. You know what I'm saying? Without Cooper Cup. So I think they did a good job. And I think, you know, you just had to trust the trust the defense. And like they did last night, you know, put Jamar Chase in motion, put him in the slot, you know figure some things out to get him the ball. You know, he's one of the best dynamic playmakers we've seen in the past five years. You know what I'm saying? you got to get him the ball. And that's what they did last night. And it, it helped them, you know, get going in the second quarter for sure, in the third quarter for sure. So, you know, we'll see. But I think we're on the same page with that. Yeah. I mean, you just want Joe Burrow fully healthy. And I don't think if he keeps playing, it's never going to get fully healthy. So, I don't know. They just got to be cautious, honestly. And I, I, I truly believe like they should just sit them until the bye week. That's a whole month, you know. But we'll see what happens. But man, you want to talk about man? Who's the most impressive three and O team? I think there's only three left, so it's just shows the parity of the NFL. But it's unanimous. It's a hundred percent the Miami Dolphins. I mean, this team looks incredible right now, you know, and I understand they play the Broncos, um, who's the the Chargers, and I can't remember the other team. What was the other team? I think they play they played New England. New England, yes. You know, it's uh, it's looking like offensively it's too easy for them right now, and you don't really hear that a lot in the National Football League from a lot of teams. You know, at some points you hear from the Chiefs the Bills, you know, the Bengals, but the Dolphins, I mean, to score 70 points, man, in a, in a National Football League, I don't care how bad the Broncos are. That's still impressive. And I think that, you know, once they get in these big-time matchups, right, you know, the Bills comes to mind. You know, they're they they like, they're gonna have, they're going to get in those good games, and if they're still able to play this way, like, they're going to be a legit contender. I didn't know if their defense would be able to hold up, but their defense has played solid. And I think that's just with how much um, momentum they have, like, as a team right now. And this is an exciting team to watch. Two is looking like the number one MVP candidate as of right now. Tyreek Hill is playing at an exceptional level. I do still have Justin Jefferson at number one, but Tyreek Hill is number two. And honestly, it's honestly 1A, 1B right now. If I'm being real with you, he he's been at an elite level. 
And if they gave the if they gave the MVP to a non quarterback position, I think it would either be Tyreek Hill or like T.J. Watt right now, or Micah Parsons. Simple. So for him to be transcending the game at a wide receiver like that, man, this team, I ain't gonna lie. If the Dolphins on, I'm watching the game, bro. Yeah, it's. You're right. I think two is the MVP right now. Um, he's playing very well. The whole offense, like just the speed they have at running back and wide receivers, it's just something we haven't really seen before, in my opinion. Like, but I feel like they're definitely the most impressive right now. Um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I think Jefferson's one, Tyreek's two, like you said, but it's Tyreek is so like. He's dangerous when he gets the ball. Like, like, I've never seen someone like him when he gets the ball. Like, what he can do after the catch. Um, and Jalen Waddle is another incredible receiver. Moster, you know, they're they're just the big thing, bro. Is if the team, like you said, with Moster, if that running game is getting going, bro, how do you stop that? If if Raheem Mostert and a cane or breaking out first downs, you know, play by play and rush, rush for 100 yards. And then you got Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle on both sides. How do you stop that? So I think you made a good point a few weeks ago when we were talking. Like, it's going to come down to, you know, those games where the weather's not that nice and you're playing a great defense like the Bills, right? Like the Niners or you know, whoever, if Tua can, you know, still play at this level, because if he, he can, I'm telling you right now, they can win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I agree. It's it's can they sustain this the whole year? You know, like you said, cold weather. You know, Kansas City, Buffalo, like those cold weather cities. Now it will help if they get the one seed. Like that would be big time for them, especially. But yeah, I mean, I think another key point key point to point out is. Um, like I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, is Jalen Ramsey coming back? If he comes back with Vic Bangio, I, Vic Bangio is one of the best defensive minds in the league, and I think defensively they're only going to continue to get better, especially if Jalen Ramsey comes back. So, you know, they'll have Ramsey and Xavier Howard on the outside, which is pretty good, really good corner cornerback duo. So I think defensively they could be pretty good. Real to really good and offensively they're the best offense in the league hands down right now so we'll see it as the season goes on if they can continue this and if everyone stays healthy of course but right now they're they're dangerous there's no doubt let's hop into a, a deep conversation so like you've heard this like the past few weeks but there's an, a lot of convo right these two guys went to college together one guy was starting quarterback for the whole year, led them to a national championship, wasn't playing up to par, down 13-0 to Georgia. You know, he gets benched, and this guy comes in to a tug of Iloa. I'm talking about Jalen Hurts, to a tug of Iloa, comes back and wins the game. Who's better right now, to a tug of Iloa or Jalen Hurts? I still trust. Jalen Hurts just a little bit more because like I've seen it for a whole season he's struggling right now but for me is I got I, I can't judge Tua yet just and I gotta see him like in those cold weather games you know late in the year and just more consistency but I think Tua is definitely he's pushing top like he could be pushing top five quarterback by the end of the year with Tua and Jalen Hurts it's tough right Jalen Hurts I think it has to be Jalen Hurts right now based off what he did in that Super Bowl. You know, the first game they won against the Giants, it was a blowout. People were like, they just blew him out. The um, NFC Championship game, Brock Purdy gets hurt. Um, just all their, you know, backup quarterbacks get hurt and everything like that. They're, they had like McCaffrey at quarterback at one point. So that game, people were like, okay, but – in the Super Bowl, he arguably outplayed, you know, Patrick Mahomes. He's also 20 and one in his last 21 games. 
So the dude's a winner. You know what I'm saying? He's got the intangibles. But in terms of passer, Tua is a better passer than Jalen Hurts. I think he's the, one of the most accurate quarterbacks. Statistically, he's the most accurate quarterback, but he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks, especially in the middle of the field, which is not a, you know, usual – it's not a usual quarterback thing to be super accurate in the middle of the field because quarterbacks don't like throwing in the middle of the field because it's muddy, everyone's clobbered. They, you know, they hit the corners, they hit the sidelines and everything like that, the flat, right? But he's been at an all-time level, I feel like, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, I'm sure it hurt, helps, but I think he is a better passer than Jalen Hurts right now, and I think you're right. I think if he does this in, you know, tougher weather conditions consistently, maybe a six, seven, eight-week stretch, beats a team like the Bills, beats a team like the Chiefs or top teams, midseason I might have him over Jalen Hurts. I'm going to be honest with you. And it's not, and it's not because I'm falling into the, you know, discrepancy of like oh Jalen Hurts hasn't planned like super well and like Tua has I just think that like if he's able to throw the ball like this consistently bro I don't think you can deny it I mean he's putting up like 350 yards a game so like he's putting up stats to go along with it the only I feel like Tua's arm like his deep ball is still not that good but like the like you said, middle of the field, like his accuracy is really solid. And when you got guys after the catch, like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, that helps a lot. But, I mean, he's still – Tua's still doing his thing. Um, and I'm not really concerned about Jalen Hurts. I I think he'll – offensively, they'll, their passing game will continue to get better. I mean, just like the, the Dolphins, they got two really good wide receivers themselves. So, I think the passing game is only a matter of time. But, yeah, I mean, Jalen Hurts is definitely more dynamic with, you know, running the ball and stuff like that. So that's where he has the edge right now. And obviously going to the Super Bowl and showing what he did last year, you you, you got to go with Jalen Hurts. But, I mean, Tua is definitely showing, like, the Dolphins can be a true Super Bowl team if he plays like this. Who's the better passer right now between Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa? I'm going to ask you who's better. Who's a better passer? I'd I'd lean towards Tua. I'd lean towards Tua too. Statistic. Yeah. He's been the top three most accurate quarterbacks in the league. Like you said, throwing for three hundred fifty to four hundred yards every week. You know that shuffle pass he had in the red zone that they ran that no look. Shit was clean, bro. That was. Shout out Mike McDaniel too. He's one of my favorite coaches. He's offensively, he's really good and he's just funny to watch. I mean, his interviews are hilarious, but yeah, that shuffle pass and just like the explosive plays they have is I mean, they're they're dynamic, there's no doubt. But I mean do you think do you think the Dolphins will win that division? Well, it's it's. I think they will. I th- they are my pick to win the division right now, but it's hard to tell right now until we see those divisional matchups. You know, we haven't seen the Dolphins Bills matchup yet. You know, we haven't seen the Dolphins Jets matchup yet. And I'm not saying like the Jets are going to beat the Dolphins, but like the Patriots, we haven't like we haven't seen all those matchups yet and it's hard to tell that's why i think it's in any division it's really hard to tell except the nfc north you know what i'm saying because a lot of those teams have played each other so you can get a little idea but i think until we see that we'll be able to tell but i think they will i think the offense is too dynamic not to right now and the run game if it's if it's if they're running the ball like that man they're gonna have the best record in the league it's it's scary for sure. I think I I to back to your point. I chief or uh not chief. Dolphins play the Bills this weekend, so that's gonna be that's that's gonna show us a lot in Buffalo too. So that's gonna show us a lot about where these teams are compared to each other. 
you know, I think everyone knows it's between those two for that division. I don't think there's any doubt at this point. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be that that week four game is gonna show us like how good this Dolphins offense really is because the Bills defense is has always been solid, really good under you know Sean McDermott and when Josh Allen's been there. So, and the I mean the Bills coming off a dominating performance themselves. So, you know it's gonna show us where they're both at. But right now I'm definitely leaning towards the Dolphins in the AFC East, but, you know, we'll see after this weekend for sure, though. What else you want to cover, man? Talk about your Bears a little bit, how you really feeling about it. Not good. <laughs> but, I mean, I honestly think – there could be a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, and a new defensive coordinator, and a new quarterback for the Bears in by April or whenever the draft is. Like I, I, I truly believe major, major changes are coming. Um, I, I hope Ryan Poles can is good and knows what he's doing, but I'm not convinced. I think. If Fields doesn't show improvement at all, like he's he's just gotta go. Like part of me part of me believes he doesn't even want to be there, honestly. I feel like it's just been would a you, total mess. Would you want to be there? No. <laughs> and yeah. I've seen was it Caleb Williams' dad or agent or somebody that said like if the number one pick isn't a good organization, like he might just go back to USC. Was that like a rumor or something that was actually like said? True. Casey, I don't think anyone in the league wants to play for the Chicago Bears. Why would Kale Kale Williams not want to go there? Bears teams look like one of the worst teams in NFL history. <laughs> I'm serious. Like it's bad. looks bad. Bad. You know what the worst part is too is we we had so much off season, you know, salary cap available and I had so much hype. I had the first, Bears the first, telling me I was gonna win the division. I had Bears fans telling me Justin Fields was gonna be MVP. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's just bad. <laughs> it's bad. And like you can't, you really can't fire Eberflus right now. Just because, like, who are you going to replace him with? Luke Getze? Give me a break. He's terrible, too. So, I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like the Bears, they don't know what they're doing on offense. They just don't know what they're doing on offense. The history of the Bears is offensively is terrible. Like, wide receivers aren't that great all the time. Quarterback is awful. Like, Jay Culler is, like, the best quarterback ever for the Bears. It's just, It's just bad. Like, offensively, they just don't know what they're doing. This game between the Chicago Bears and the Denver Broncos is a must-win for both teams. It's a must I hope they tie. <laughs> the Bears lose this game because it's in Chicago, right? If the Bears lose this game in Chicago, that whole Bears team better get out that stadium. ASAP. They are about to riot at us outside of Soldier Field, bro. If the Bears lose to the Broncos. Honestly, I, I think we will. I really do. They I had the coach advantage. Go on four. What did you say? I think you guys are going to lose and go on four. I think you guys are going to get blown out. <laughs> Goes. At your home field. <laughs> I mean, the Broncos have the better coach, no doubt, and probably the better quarterback. It's close, but right now they Russell Wilson's been better. And when you when you allow 70 points, like you're just if you have any pride at all, you're gonna come back like like motivated and just pissed off that like, like you got embarrassed like that. And I know the Bears got embarrassed too, but 70 points is different. 
Like that's just a whole different feeling. So I think the Broncos like it's gonna be interesting. That that's gonna be like one of the most hyped up 0 and three versus 0 and three matchups in like recent memory. I wonder if teams even practice the week they play the Bears. Like <laughs> even put in schemes and game plans. Do they even run personnel? Like, are they just like uh you take Claypool, you take Mooney. They won't even use DJ Moore. It won't even matter. Justin Fields, just blitz him. He's going to hold the ball, and then we're going to put a quarterback spy on him and scramble. And he's going to scramble and tackle him every time. And then the defense, man, you got to do is run, play action, big play down the field, and score. It's a simple formula. There's no <laughs> – I really don't think they like – I think the coaches might be like, kick your feet up this week. We got the Chicago Bears on the lineup. If you if you're feeling a little sick, just don't come. Just be here by Saturday, now nah, Sunday at nine a.m. before the game, and and we'll be all right. That's what it looks like out there. It, it looks like they're a college team or like a, a minor league team. That's it looks, what it looks. Like. It's like a cakewalk, a free win, a free entry, like on on a parlay, a free entry. You know what the worst thing is? We've lost thirteen straight. 13 straight is pretty hard to lose in the NFL. That's how bad it is right now. But I don't know. I think we lose. I I hope we win just for the fans' sake. But I hope y'all do, man. But I don't know. I I feel bad for y'all, man. You, you, like, this is bad. It It might be better to lose. Just so we get that, like, the march for the number one pick. But, yeah. I mean, we'll probably mess that up too. It's just the, yeah. I don't know. But I expect the Cowboys to bounce back for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, England is a tough team to play. So we got to be ready to go. Simple as that. I mean, we let James Conner run up and down the field, so we didn't look good, man. And we we could have been ranked as like a top five team in the league, and now we're I don't think we're in the top five after losing to the Cardinals. I mean, you can't put us top five, so it'll be interesting once we play a good team. Yeah, I think y'all play the Niners coming up in week five. Yeah, we play the Niners. If we beat the Niners, I'm going to be talking a lot. <laughs> if we beat the Niners week five, I'm going to be talking a lot. Yeah, as you should. But, yeah, that's all I got. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll be back soon with Pick'em and maybe a guest too. So, peace.